Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So, we are starting a new series, this time how to make an Undertale battle in Scratch. Now, we did this about a year ago in a live stream, but I've always wanted to come back to the project and do something more in depth with a better variety of attacks uh, and a bit more of an ability to tell your own story. As you can see, what we've got here is quite a wide variety of different types of attacks you need to evade. And what I'm going to do is show you all these different elements and then you can put them together how you want to and you can tell your own story with your own enemy, your own character. So here we are with our new Scratch project. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the backdrop black. So go across to the right side of the screen, click on just underneath where it says stage, then in the top left corner click on backdrops. Now we're going to make a box just here and we're going to do the fill as black here and we need to then draw this box through the entire inner square so it covers the entire screen. Okay, so that's good. Our backdrop's black. It looks like an Undertale game now. What we're going to do now is we're going to choose our enemy. So you can choose a new sprite or get a graphic from the internet if you like or draw your own. I'm going to use the Scratch Cat for now and I might change that later but we'll see. So I'm going to um, click on this sprite one and I'm going to rename this sprite enemy. Now I want this sprite to be quite high on the screen so I'm actually going to put into the code um, some code that makes the Scratch Cat go to a specific point on the screen when the game starts. So we're going to go to events, the yellow category on the left. We're going to get out when green flag clicked. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see that a bit better. Um, and then we're going to go to motion, the dark blue category. And we're going to get out a go to x, y, drag that out. Now the x value is how far left and right the character is on the screen. We're going to make that zero. That's going to make the character in the center of the screen. The y value is how far up or down they are. I'm going to say, let's say 85. Now if I hit go here, the character is going to snap there. I quite like that placement. You can change these numbers, have an experiment if you want the character to be in a slightly different position, but I'm pretty happy with that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make the box that our character, our heart, is stuck in and cannot move outside of. So we're going to go down to the bottom right corner of the screen and we're going to move up until we find paint and we're going to click on paint. Now we need this um, another box, but we need the fill to be empty. And we need the outline to be white. And you can choose how thick you want the box to be, but I think five pixels is good. Now it's a little hard to see on this screen, but you should be able to see it across in this screen okay. Now, once you've got a box that you're happy with, you'll notice that it's a little bit crooked. So what we're going to need to do is change the X variable to zero to put it in the middle of the screen and the Y variable to zero, put it in the middle of the screen. There we go, that's good. Um, so that's more centered in the screen, but you'll notice that this box, now it's in the middle, is kind of, we want it to be a bit lower than that. Now. Normally, we just move the sprite, but for reasons that will become clear later, we're going to do things a bit differently this time round. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drag the top part of the box down and we're going to drag the bottom part of the box down. And the reason we're, that we're doing it this way is so that we can fill in the outside of the box, which will make our attacks look a little bit better. Um, in most Undertale attacks, they all stay inside the box. And so this is going to be useful later. So speaking of filling in the outside of the box, if you try to fill the outside of this box um, in black, you'll notice that you can't. You theoretically could fill the inside of the box, 
but we can't actually do the outside while we are in vector mode. Now, this means that we're going to need to swap to bitmap mode. So just click on this blue button right here where it says convert to bitmap. And these graphics work a little bit different, but the important thing for our purpose is that we're able to fill in the outside of our box. So let's put some code into our box sprite that makes sure it always um, is centered. So go to events, pull out a when green flag clicked, go to motion, pull out a go to X and Y, and we're going to set that X to zero, Y to zero, so that even if we move this around, um, when we start the game, the box always goes back to the middle. Now you'll notice our enemy is just being covered up by this box that we've made. So let's fix that too, shall we? Let's go to the enemy sprite. Let's have a look in the code. Let's go to the purple category looks. And let's look for let's look for go to front layer. It's near the bottom. We're going to drag that and put it right underneath when green flag clicked. So now when we start the game, the character always comes out on top of the box. That's what we want. Speaking of which, let's rename this sprite from sprite one to box. Okay, let's make a start in the player character, the heart. Let's go to the bottom right corner and click on choose a sprite. Now you can do a search right here for heart, and I'm gonna select this one here. Now I'm just gonna go up to the costumes in the top left corner, and I'm going to use the select tool to remove the outline from the heart. There we go, no outline. I'm also going to remove the purple costume of the heart because we are going to come back to the costumes of our heart in a later episode. All right, let's go back to the code and let's start putting in some code for moving our heart around. So first of all, let's go to events. Let's get out a when green flag clicked. And then let's go to control the orange category and pull out a forever. Inside this forever, we are going to put some functions that move our character up, left, right. But before we do that, let's create a variable that controls how fast our character can move. Let's go to the orange category, variables, click on that, and then click on make a variable, and call this variable player speed. Now press OK, and then pull out a set my variable, change that to player speed, and then we're going to set the player speed to, let's say, 5 for now. And we're going to also change the size of our heart. Our heart needs to be a lot smaller. You can do that right over here where it's got size 100 and change that to size 10 for now. Now what we need to do is make sure that our heart is always in the right place when we start the game. So let's go to motion, the dark blue category, and let's get out a go to X and Y. And for now, let's just set that to zero and zero. Cool, the heart kind of appears in the center of the screen, which is just within the box. That looks good, that looks good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to my blocks, the pink, pinkish reddish category on the left side. Click on that and then click on make a block. Now call this move up and then press OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to put code underneath this define move up and everything that we put underneath define move up will now be contained within one of these little move up blocks. So this is what, a, what is called a function in computer programming. A function is when you package up a bunch of code and then you use a single line, a single little block to summon all of that code. It's really, really useful to use functions because then it means that you don't have to write out code more than once. And we're gonna use it specifically here to keep a good idea of what all of our code does. 
So we've got our define move up. We need to do some more. We need move down, move left, move right. So make some more. We're going to call this one move down. Let's make move left. And let's make move right. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to just arrange these, my blocks, these defines, into an arrangement that makes sense to me. Now, we need to make sure that we get from the left side here, a move left, a move down, a move right, so that all four of them are over here underneath our forever. Otherwise, they won't happen. So let's look for our define move up and let's put some code underneath that. So let's go to control the orange category and pull out an if then. Then we're going to go to the light blue category sensing and pull out a key space pressed. Now, can you see the six sided shape will fit inside this six sided hole in between the if and the then. Now we're going to click on where it says space and change this to up arrow. So this is good. This is an if then statement. It's going to ask a question. The question is, have you pressed the up arrow? And if the answer to that question is yes, everything inside the if then is going to be performed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to motion, the dark blue category. We're going to get out a change Y by 10. Drag that out, put it inside our if then. This is going to make our character go up. Changing y by a positive number is going to make our character go up. But if we were to change y by a negative number, it would make our character go down. So we're going to go to um, variables, the orange category. And we're going to look for our player speed variable. We're going to drag that out and we're going to put it so that the left side of it is over the 10 in change y by 10. So now what we should have is the ability to press up and make our heart travel up. But the problem is our heart can go through the walls of the box. So what we need to do is we need to um, go to control and get out another if then statement drag that out and put it underneath change y by player speed and then we're going to go back to sensing the light blue category and we're going to get out touching mouse pointer drag that out and put it in between the if and the then click on where it says mouse pointer and change it to box so if touching box then what we're going to do is we're going to get out another change y and we're going to go to operators the green cat category and then we're going to pull out a minus operator and put it over the 10 and then we're going to get another player speed and put it in the second socket so now what we have is if key up arrow press change y by player speed but if you're touching the box then change y by minus player speed and this is going to happen faster than we can see it it's going to happen instantaneously so what's going to what it's going to look like is if we start the game when we go up we stop at the edge of the box there we go, that's good, that's what we want. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to copy all of this code and just change it a little bit so that it works for our move down. So, hover over where it says if, um, right, ne right to the left of key up arrow pressed, right click, then normal click on duplicate. And we've got all this code copied. So we don't have to um, get it all out manually. And drop that underneath move down. And we need to change this if key up arrow pressed to if key down arrow pressed. And then what we need to do is get out this player speed and then take this minus player speed and swap them. 
So now whenever we press the down arrow, it makes it changes our y by a minus number, which will move us down. And if we hit the bottom of the box, if we end up touching the box, then it will again reverse that. Make it, make sure it moves us out of the box sprite. So now we can go up and we can go down. Now changing y by positive or negative moves us up and down. So if we change x, we will move our character left and right. So let's go to define move left. Let's duplicate. Let's make some space here. And what we need to do is we need to change up arrow to left arrow. We need to pull out the change Y's. Don't need those. And we need to replace them with change X. And we're going to get out a player speed and a minus player speed. So if the key left arrow pressed, then change X by minus player speed. That's going to move us left. But if we end up in the box, then we need to change X by the reverse of that. So player speed. Let's duplicate this whole thing and move it underneath define move right. But we need to change our left arrow to right arrow and swap our player speed and minus player speed. So let's give it a test. We can move in all four directions, but we cannot leave the box, which is exactly what we want. Now, depending on the size of the box that you drew, you'll probably notice that you might have some gaps um, in between where your heart can go and where the box begins. That's to do with how we programmed the collision. There are ways around this, but it's probably more complicated than we need to get into just yet. The big advantage with the way that we've coded this is that we've tied up this variable into all of our code, the player speed variable right here. You could change this and your heart can be immediately sped up or slowed down. If we change it down to one, for example, our heart becomes very slow. Now, there's two really useful things about having your code set up this way. And that is if you decide uh, partway through your game that your heart needs to be faster or slower, especially to change the difficulty of your game, if you, you only need to change it once right here. Otherwise, you would have to change it in like eight different places. And that would be annoying and it would be very easy to miss one. And if your player moves faster in one direction than another, your game's not going to work the way you want it to. Um, so that's useful. The other advantage is that we can also change the player speed in game. So maybe there's a, a special attack that the enemy has that slows your character down or speeds them up. Very useful. So that's all we need for this week. Next week, we're going to start on the projectiles. Until then, make sure you subscribe to the next episode. Stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.